Hi, this is Eric Carr from Looker. And today I'm gonna to talk about setting up the plugin for Looker from DataIQ so that DataIQ can access a Looker dataset and use that for downstream machine learning, including classification and prediction. In this case, I've set up a bank data dataset. I've grabbed some information from a publicly available dataset. It's for marketing data from a bank. And that bank has called a number of different people and offered them a term deposit. It's collected information about those groups, their demographics, and whether or not they subscribe to that term deposit when it was offered to them. So I've taken that, it's a CSV file, I've pushed it into an Athena database and I've sat Looker on top of it for exploration. And then I've also created some assets in Looker that I can use in DataIQ. Let's take a look at those. So very quickly, I've created a query and that query is sitting on top of the data that I've exposed in Looker, along with all of the information about that data. And then I have created what I call a look on top of it. That's simply a query that I'm gonna access using data IQ later. It contains all of the information from that underlying bank data. I'll take note of the number here at the end of this URL. So this is look number 23, I'll use that later. The other things I need in advance of setting up this plugin or using the plugin, are an API key. So the plugin is going to access Looker via the API. And in order to do that, it needs to authenticate. Over in my instance, I need to find my API key. I'll do that by navigating to admin, to users, and then clicking here on API three keys. Here, I'll take note of the client ID and the client secret. Write those down because I'll need to use them later. Finally, I'll need a Python 3.7 or higher environment in my data IQ instance or accessible to that instance. So I'll take note of that and make sure that I know the directory or path to the executable that I'll be using. This will vary from instance to instance. In my case, I've used Homebrew to install it on my local machine and I've taken note of the URL to the Python 3 executable. Great. So with that information, we'll go ahead and set up the plugin. Over in Data IQ, I navigate to Plugins. In the Plugin Store, I can look for the plugin that I'm interested in, in this case, Looker. I can see that there's a query connector out there and that it gets the results of a Looker query using the API. This is exactly what I want, so if it's not installed, I'll click on Install. If it is, I'll click on click See Details and see what makes up this code base. So here's my connector more information here in the plugin documentation, a code environment, and two components, the data set itself and a parameter set. So the first thing I do if I'm installing this is set up the code environment for it. And that code environment requires Python. Like I said earlier, this is 3.7 or above for this particular SDK. And I've already set this up, but if I hadn't, I would create a new environment. I'd select managed by DSS. I'd select a custom Python and then I'd paste in the path there to my Python executable. With that, I'd build a new environment. So this environment creation is going to look at the Looker SDK, gather all of the dependencies necessary for this plugin to work within, the, within this environment, and it's going to create that environment in DSS so that I can use it to access data from Looker. This takes a little bit less than a minute to run, so we'll let it go ahead. As it installs dependencies, it'll let us know if there's any problems. And if there are, we'll go back through and fix them. Here, environment creation. I can watch as it creates this. It doesn't take too long here. It's installing required packages, upstream dependencies. These will differ slightly depending on the local environment that you're installing for DSS. But eventually, what I'll have is an import succeeding. So great, this is awesome. Now that I have a code environment that the plugin can run in, I'll want to do one of two things. Either get started right away creating a new project and using that data set to grab information from Looker, or maybe I'll set up a parameter set of ahead of time so that it's easier for me to access the data when I do create that new project. Settings here allows me to look at parameter sets. Parameter sets are sets of information that the Looker plugin requires in order for it to access the data. There are three things of note, and you'll remember that we took note of these earlier so that we can just create these very easily. 
first the URL for our API, and that was the instance with that colon and 19999. That's our URL with port to get to that API. Next, the client ID. We took note of that as well. Here the client secret finally, um, and then permissions for who can use this in the instance. Once I've got all of that set up, I can begin to use this in my project. So I've created a project here that essentially is going to grab this information from Looker. It's going to sync that with a local database based on data IQ best practices. It's going to do some cleanup, and then it's going to run it through a machine learning lab. And finally, it's going to create some predictions. So let's take a look at each of these in turn. Here, my query. So this is grabbing information from Looker. If I look at the settings here, I can see information necessary to grab this, info, this from Looker. Here's my preset credentials that I set up. I could do this manually, but I've also got these sets of information that are preset to access from a particular instance using a particular user's credentials. I'll also need that look ID that I took note of, number 23. And I can test and get my schema to make sure this is working. Awesome, so this is working great. I've got all of the information from Looker and you'll note that this corresponds to the query itself, number 23, that I put together earlier. Next, I might want to sync this up. So this is a best practice recommended by Data Aiku. Instead of going back and forth over the network to a cloud database over and over again, I might want to sync this into a local copy. I've done that here. The cleanup step was part of the creation of my machine learning project. And Data Aiku has propagated that into my workflow. It's basically going through and looking at a couple of different things. And we'll take a look at those in a second. Here is my lab for the machine learning project. I'm gonna look at the original analysis here to see how that was set up. Let's look at the script. So the script here is that cleanup output, right? So it takes the information from my data set and it applies different steps to it. So data IQ scripts here are being used to look at three different fields and to clean those based on um, uh, rules that I've applied. So has credit default, has housing loan, and has personal loan are all being scanned and any time that those fields have an unknown value in them, it's blanking them out. This results in a better prediction for me. I've then created a model, or trained a couple of different models, and finally chosen one to deploy. So in this case, I've run a couple of sessions and looked at different models to see how they compared. Those models are available here. You can create different models. You can create um, models that are a bit more complicated. You can try different things to make um, tests on whether or not a machine learning model for say XGBoost or some other type would perform better. But in this case, we've chosen a very simple model, logistic regression and decision tree. And we've determined that the logistic regression model scores slightly better. And we can take a look at what the variables that corresponded to those scores are, as well as other information about the model itself including a confusion matrix to determine whether or not we predicted well within the testing and training for this particular model. So once I've created that and decided on the model that I wanted, I deploy it out and that becomes the um, logistic regression model that's uh, accessed here. And then I create a score or a sync to score the model and add to my predictions. <clears throat> So the prediction step is pushing that, the predictions for this particular set of data back out into my database. And then I can go back over into Looker to see how well I've actually done in reality. Um, and so Looker lets me explore this in multiple different ways, but I created a little visualization here to kind of show how the outcome looks. And I've split that into a couple of different things, uh, what I call true negatives, false negatives, true positives, and false positives. And these are familiar to anyone who's done classification in the past. This is really just um, the number of predictions that were zero that were actually zero and matched up, true negatives. The number of predictions that were zero and were actually one, false negatives. 
the number of predictions that were one and were actually one. That's my true positives. And then finally, my predictions that were zero, that were actually one, my false positives. And since this data set was very highly skewed towards the negative in terms of the actual data that I had available to train in the original data set, there were a lot more people who did not accept that term loan deposit than did. This is actually a fairly great result. With very little work in data IQ, I've created a model that is fairly predictive. It correctly predicts a lot of my true negatives, right? So most of the people that didn't take a term loan, uh, they actually predicted correctly. So we've showed how you can use data IQ to connect into Looker, to explore information from Looker, grab that information into a data IQ workflow to do some cleanup and to actually do classification on that or to run a machine learning training using data IQ to select one of those and deploy it and then finally to push those predictions back over into a database for exploration in Looker. We've looked at that in a little bit of detail over in Looker to see how our predictions fared. And we can put this together into a production workflow that then allows us to continually update Looker with predictions from our machine learning models.